welcome back to the channel today i want to do a video going over all of the updates that i can see so far ready to probably drop this year or maybe early next year for the 2023 big three hd lineup so this should be a good video and hopefully i answer a lot of you guys' questions people have been asking me about ram the most i would say that gm there's a lot of speculation for those and ford we'll have to see what they're going to do so stay tuned i'm gonna go ahead and we'll jump into ford first so back in 2017 ford officially uh released their redesigned ford hd truck so that's gonna be the f250 f350 and they pretty much did a brand new cab brand new bed uh, pretty much a new 6.7 liter power stroke and it was a really good contender now at the time ram and gm had not quite yet done any updates i think the only at the time that had been changed on gm was that they updated the duramax to the l5p uh, ram again they probably may have updated some power at that point but for the most part they were both unchanged trucks so for ford at that time they were the they were pretty much number one now i'm thinking because it's been so much time since they've done a complete redesign because the last update that they did to the ford was back in 2020 when gm unveiled their brand new truck so at this point i think that with ford have already doing their first refresh that was three years we should be seeing a brand new truck for them now there's not a lot of information online whether or not Ford's going to change their powertrains, but I'm pretty sure you're going to see a new interior. Uh, they already have got the big screen. I'm pretty sure they're going to add the the uh, the screen for the Cluster 2 that they have on the Ford F-150s. But for the most part, there's not a lot of information online what they're going to do or what they have plans on doing. But if you look at the F-150, they did add like a 30 amp plug, I believe. So I'm pretty sure they're going to probably do something like that. Like it's like a system that you can use as a generator for your camper rv or your trailer and i'm pretty sure with the hd trucks being their biggest haulers they're going to incorporate that same application in the hd trucks so i'm pretty sure that ford is going to probably be the big one in the news when they unveil that new truck because it will be a complete redesign it won't be a refresh it won't be a overhaul it'll be a brand new truck um, my thinking is with the everything going on in the world the ford truck still looks great has great athleticism with the 67 power stroke the 73 is a great option for those wanting a gas truck and if you want the best price possible and still a good towing rig the 6.2 liter gas is still a good competitor if you get an f350 you do get that 10 speed transmission behind that 6.2 which makes it even better especially if you add a 430 rear axle to it so i'm thinking that ford's probably going to hold off I'm, I'm just guessing here i'm thinking that ford's going to keep riding with the new truck although there are speculations they're going to redesign it i'm thinking there's no need for them to update the truck. They just put the bigger screen in there. The interior still looks great, you know, from you know my perspective. I and mean, granted, it's not a Ram, but it's definitely good enough for another year or so. And I only think that because, I mean, the inventory levels are so low, there's no need for them to update the truck. So that's just my opinion. I think that they're gonna wait another year and then we'll probably see something for sure in 2024, but we'll have to wait and see if I'm right or wrong. Now let's talk about some things I would like to see from Ford. Now the very first thing, 100%, is gonna be updates to the gas engine and the 10-speed transmission. Now, the specific engine I'm talking about is a 7.3 liter. A few people have told me that they've had some issues with the 7.3, and a few people have also said they've had some issues with the 10-speed. I think that Toe Piglet had mentioned the 10-speed having issues. Now, that doesn't mean that Ford's a bad company. It doesn't mean that they're building trash. It just means that 7.3 and that 10 speed are gonna be brand new power plants. So they're gonna have some type of issue. So you have to expect that. But my goal is I'm hoping that they do some updates to minimize some of the failures that those powertrain components have been having. But my hope is for the 2020 the model year is that they update those transmissions and engine. That way there will be less failures in them and of course make them more reliable. 
The second thing I would like to see from Ford, and this is just something that I like that Stellantis is doing, is I would like for them to add air suspension as an option. I know that it's not really something that they normally do. They've never offered that. And I think that it would be a good option for them. That way they can be more competitive against Ram. I think that Fords do squat considerably. I, I've seen some guys going down the highway with a maybe like an F-350 dually and they're pulling a pretty big toy hauler. It's about, about 3,500 pounds of pin weight, maybe some gear in the truck. The truck's squatting pretty good. Ram's option, if you do plan on getting a heavy trailer, you might as well go ahead and select the option for the air suspension. I think that Ford would really benefit from that because they make these trucks more in line with the consumer having a more comfortable ride. So they're gonna have a little bit more squat with that being said. So I think that if they add that air suspension, it would really help people who are in the market for a Ford to not have to worry about doing it after the fact. The very last thing, and I just mentioned this earlier in the video, with the Ford F-150 having the option of having like a generator type plug for a 30 amp power supply, I would like to see that obviously on the HD lineup too. So hopefully they do it. I'm pretty sure they will. So this one might be an answer to prayer. I hope that you know they update the system too where it can maybe do a little bit more. But for those who are camping, and I'm sure you heard, I think uh, one of my followers had told me this, uh, Rick West, that California was thinking about outlawing generators or making it illegal to use them, which is stupid. And I mean, more reasons why I would never probably go visit California, but that might be something that will be helpful for those people in California if they do have a trailer and they can't use a generator that that option would be available for them. Up next is GM. As you guys know, for 2020, the GMC and the Chevrolet Silverado HDs got redesigned. And I think the GMC was received well. However, I don't think that the Chevrolet was. I think a lot of people did not like the front end of that truck. The good news is they are talking about doing a refresh for the exterior and they're supposed to put in a brand new interior. Now we have kind of already seen the new interior on the half ton segment. So this is good news. If you have not seen that interior, I'll be sure to put it in this video. I think that this is a great step for GM. If they put that interior in HD trucks, I would not be upset if I had to switch from a Ram to a GM. I would not be. I would love that new interior. I would definitely rock with that all day long. However, if GM does put in that new Duramax, which is supposed to have like 500 or something, horsepower something crazy and over a thousand pound feet of torque maybe like 1190 or 1100 i can't remember the numbers but it's just rumors right now but if they do that that would pretty much put them above ram and ford in pretty much every category i mean hey interior design is subjective you can't rate a truck unless it's just really bad like the gm trucks are right now but if they fix that interior again i could go either way because i loved it now here are some things i think are probably going to affect this truck and i really do think that because like i said with ford there's really no need for these guys to spend the money because there's not a lot of inventory so it's kind of scary for me i think that they're going to go ahead and do a refresh because of the half tons but they could put the powertrain on hold for the GM lineup but if they do go along and do the updates they're supposed to get a new front end and a new rear for the exterior new interior and like I said there should be some powertrain updates now what are some things that I would like to see from GM on the next truck now I did take notes on this because I have a little bit more than I did on the Ford now I love the 6.6 .6 gas I would like for them to add a 10 speed transmission. It doesn't have to be the Allison. I know that that Allison name is, you know, tried and true for the Duramax and they don't want to steal sales from the diesel. I think that if they beefed up the 10 speed on the half ton side, it would be a good option for that 6.6 .6 gas. It could even be an optional transmission. I think that if they did that, they could probably really be a good contender for the gas segment. And we finally made it to the Ram lineup. So I think that this one is probably most important for me 
because I own a Ram, so I'm always looking. So as you guys know, in 2019, Ram did a pretty big overhaul, specifically in the interior. They did an overhaul on the Cummins. They added an eight-speed transmission to the 6.4 liter Hemi, and they really brought their A game this time around. Now, the only thing that did not get changed were the caps. And for 2023, I think we can expect the cabs to keep rolling as is. So you're gonna see these same cabs. Unfortunately, uh, I, I would like to see a bigger cab, but you know what, hey, the truck's interior and exterior design is, is top notch right now. Now, I'm gonna put some of the sources where I got some of this information from in the video so you can look it up. I'll probably put it in the description, so be sure to click down there. You can kind of click on the links and go to the websites. So HD Rams is where I got a lot of the information from for the upcoming 2023 model year. Now, special shout out to Eric Scott. Like he just ordered like two Rams within the last uh, few months. I think he's been waiting on one for a lot longer than the other, but he actually sent me this information. I didn't really expect to do a video on the Rams. I was actually gonna do one just for Ford and GM because I hadn't seen anything yet for the Ram lineup for HD. So I was just gonna skip them for this video, but I'm glad he sent it to me because I can add it in here now. So. Here's some of the information I found. Not much is gonna look different for the exterior and interior, but we could see updates closer to the springtime. That's what hdrams.com said. One thing that I did notice that a lot of people are gonna be happy about, and I'm gonna kinda of be happy about, is that they're changing the mirror design for the HD trucks. Hopefully, they are plug and play because I like these mirrors, but it would be nice to be able to have a new design mirror that is probably gonna be a little bit more advanced more power um, and then we hopefully won't have to keep flipping them up and down. I think that that would help because I don't flip my mirrors down anymore. I just keep them up all the time because I tow all the time. So that seems to be the biggest update thus far for the overall design of the truck that we can see. Let's talk about powertrains. Everyone hates that Ram has two Cummins options. The first one's obviously standard and then the second one, the high output, is only available for the 3500 one tons. So the high output Cummins does not make sense if you are not towing. I'm just gonna be completely honest with you. If you're trying to get the most power, whatever, whatever, I'll do a separate video on it. I really think that you're wasting your money if you're not planning on towing. That's just my opinion, and I'll go over that in another video, but right now, there's no talks about transmission. I'm just gonna tell you that right now. I hope you weren't waiting to hear me say great news because I don't know. I, I don't have this like great relationship with Ram. I think some of you guys think that I'm like tied in. I ri I don't know those guys. Like they don't know me. They don't probably even watch my videos. They probably don't know I exist. So hopefully you still follow me despite that. And in time, maybe I'll get closer and be able to have a little bit more insider news that other people don't have. But for now, there's no talk about a new transmission for the Rams. Now that's not a bad thing per se, you have to keep in mind with diesels, the RPMs run pretty low. I will say though, the Eisen, I would like to see some enhancements, like some major enhancements. We don't have to have 10 gears. I think eight or nine would be fine. Cause again, this truck runs pretty low on RPMs with six speeds, but haven't heard anything about the powertrain yet. I'm pretty sure they're gonna probably do something with the gas engine, I'm thinking, because it is a long time coming at this point. I think that the eight speed was a good gesture but now it's time to figure out what, not, what they're gonna do. Let's talk about this new trim level. This is probably the most exciting thing. Now, in the picture I'm gonna show you, notice this power wagon is missing a winch. And that's because this is supposedly a new trim level called the Rebel. Now, obviously the Rebel name's not new because the half tons have had this nameplate for a while now. So I think because of what Ford has done with the trimmer and what GM has done with the AT4, this is kind of like Ram's way of trying to bring something into the marketplace to be more aggressive because I love off-road packages. I think that they're great for people who you know want to have a big truck. I think that the suspension is a little bit softer so the truck rides a little bit nicer. And this Rebel looks to be the answer to the trimmer, which is good. Now, I've said this in other videos, the Power Wagon is not a contender with the trimmer. It's just not. The Power Wagon is a true purpose-built truck for going off-road. They lower the GVWR of the truck, it's like 80-something like hundred pounds, 
and overall the truck is lighter and it can't tow as much because of that the suspension is different they lifted it and it's really a purpose-built truck the trimmer is not that the trimmer is just a hd truck with a option package for off-road that's all it is and that's what the rebel is going to be so now we have a true contender that we will see and it hopefully will have a cummins motor available with it that will be cool and i'm really thinking that this is something that we need because this might be a truck that i'm interested in now i did notice that they did have some graphics or some i guess camouflage on the hood so i'm thinking that that hood might be a little bit different from the power wagon they're using a limited longhorn 18 inch style wheels and it looks to have bf goodrich uh mud tires on there too and something that they might do different for the 2023 model year because they're doing it in a lot of cars and hd rams i'm gonna give them credit because they said it first but they may add that 12 and a quarter inch screen to the cluster so hopefully if that's the case you know everything will be pretty much digital up top here so that would be kind of cool and it'll look really modern it'll really make this interior look even more modern basically and really when it comes down to changes to the hd lineup here's what i would like to see from ram on the next refresh or even a redesign uh i think that the truck needs to go on a diet that's just my opinion i think this truck needs to lose about 500 pounds that's really hard to do in terms of an hd truck because it has to be built strong and it has to have heavy parts if ram can find a way though to lower the weight of this truck the next thing I think Ram should do is raise the GVWR as an option, not for all the trucks. Do what GM is doing. GM did it the best. They still offer the 10,000 pound gross fuel void rating. And I think that on the three quarter side of things, if you could tow a good 12,000 pound fifth wheel without going over your gross fuel weight rating, that would be awesome. So removing 500 pounds from this truck and maybe raising the gross fuel weight rating, probably 800 pounds, not much more than that. I think for the, this truck, like a mega cab, like a three quarter ton mega cab, maybe maybe 11,000, give a couple hundred pounds more because this cab is heavier than the crew cab. And the, of course, raising it for the long bed crew cab 2500 too. But having 500 pounds plus 800, that should give you just enough space to like tow a decent sized fifth wheel. Maybe, maybe a 12,000 pound GVWR trailer. Uh, probably nothing too heavy on the front end of it, but like like no front living, things like that. Probably something along the lines of like a bedroom and just a regular 32, 34 foot trailer. And the next thing is more gears. As you would know, I think that we don't need 10 gears, but I think eight, eight or nine gears would be awesome. And one of the things that I would love to see from Ram is adaptive headlights. They did a great job with the headlights. I don't understand why they just didn't give us adaptive. They went with the directional, which is, is really useless. I, I don't really care for them. I don't think that, it's a cool gesture, I guess. Like, thank you, I guess. But I would rather them go up and down because of course, if you add your fifth wheel or your trailer to the truck, the front end kind of lifts up a little bit and their headlights goes in people's eyes. So it'd be nice to not have to go in there and use a screwdriver to aim them down. You know, I don't do that, I'll be honest. If you see me coming, I'm gonna blind you, so sorry. Lastly, they are doing this AT4. I took these notes a while ago too. I want you guys to know that. An AT4 and trimmer competitor. That was something I really wanted to see and it looks like they're gonna be doing that. And the last thing which is really, really, really important to me, continuation of the Mega Cab. I really like this cab. I like the way it looks. It looks like a, a, a big semi truck going down the road. I know a lot of people don't like it which makes me like it even more. So I hope they keep making this cab. Even if they don't change it, I probably would just buy it still. I mean, granted, I would love for them to do a complete redesign of the cabs one day, and if they do continue this, it'd be nice if they updated this cab too, not discontinue it. So in my opinion, I really think that Ram's gonna discontinue the mega cab for the next generation of trucks because the crew cab from the half tons is big enough and there's no need for them to continue this cab because that cab is big enough and the seats recline and there's a little bit more floor space flat floor surface all that good stuff but guys thank you so much for watching this video i'm glad i had a chance to do this i know a lot of you guys have been asking me to do a video like this anyways again i appreciate your support and please leave a comment below if you like this video and any thoughts that you have anything i might have missed 
this was just a quick on the fly video and i think it'd be kind of cool to see what you guys thoughts are too see you in the next video